2022 witnessed a significant escalation in the number of cyber crimes occurring against businesses, a 57% increase. Fast forward through 2023, an additional 15% increase. Compared to 2021, a cumulative 72% increase in cybercrime. And guess what? Trends aren't getting better. Um, comparing Q4 of 2023, the number of attacks that occurred then versus Q1 of 2024, there's a 28% increase just three months to three month comparison. And already, and I'm recording this video in June of 2024, there has already been a 5% increase year over year, 2024 versus 2023, and we're not even halfway through the year. So what's driving this increase? Is it the post-pandemic economy? Is it the dark web, the advent of AI? Or could it be that there are now malicious services, cyber crime as a service products, available to any aspiring criminal who wants to get these enterprises started. And remember, what we're talking about here is data breaches against hospitals, universities, healthcare systems, small, medium, large businesses. And those data breaches are centered around getting your information so they can use it for their nefarious purposes or sell it on the dark web to others who want to do so. So here's what we need to know about what's going on in these cyber criminal trends. Since its inception in 1999, the software as service industry has just ballooned. There are now software as service companies in over 100 countries worldwide. And in the US, in fact, there are over 17,000 software as service providers servicing 59 billion customers worldwide and generating revenues topping 401 billion. Why do people go to software service solutions? It's for the cost savings, the improved processes and efficiencies they offer, access to a greater and broader array of tools and resources beyond what someone could build. And finally, they're much more cost effective than building a product from the ground floor up with all the development time, all the learning curve involved, everything else, easy to implement, out of the box, and accessible immediately. So let's look at some of the common brands, and I bet you're using one, possibly many more than one, of these services. Here's just a very, very partial list of the software as service products available on the market today. And as you scan through this list, think about, personally, professionally, which ones have you used, which ones do you currently use? I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, in this list that are part of my day-to-day -day life, right? Microsoft Office, Zoom for meetings, Adobe for creating these videos, Salesforce for tracking progress, the Google Workspace environment, HubSpot. Um, and I'm sure all of you either have or currently do use these products. And the real benefit of a software as service product is it allows us to focus in on those things that we have expertise in without having to be experts in other areas, gathering information, logging, predictions, CR, uh, KPIs, all those types of things, right? Well, the reason I want to show you this is to give you a real world application for what we're about to talk about next because it didn't take long for the cyber criminals to catch on to this market. At the beginning of this video, I shared with you the literal explosion of cyber crime and data breaches that's occurred since 2001. And I posed the question to you, what do you think is contributing to that explosion? And it's certainly vulnerabilities in our corporate practices and the things that we do at home, the ways we protect our uh, security networks. But just like any good business person, cyber criminals have assessed the serviceable area market and the serviceable opportunity market and defined their niche. And guess what? There is now such a thing as cyber crime as a service. These are out-of-the-box solutions 
that hackers can use rather than worrying about how to sell the data that they get to really focus on what they do best and that's hacking. And would you believe as of 2023, for the year of 2023 alone, cyber crime as a service has now become a $1.6 billion industry. Let's look at some additional numbers. In the year 2021, there were 1,864 reported data breach cyber attacks. In 2022, 1,802, so a slight decline. In 2023, 3,000. Any guess where we're at this year? Mid-year almost, this is uh, June 12th as I record this video. Any guess where we're at this year in 2024? There have already been 9,478 data breach cyber attacks reported, and we're only halfway through the year. So again, does it have anything to do with the post-pandemic economy? Yeah, possibly it does. Um, but I think it has a whole lot more to do with these um, cyber crime as a service products. And listen, we looked at uh, Microsoft, right, which is a, a white hat, let's call it, a good actor, you know, productivity suite, uh, Zoom for video conferencing and recording of notes and those types of things, Salesforce is our CRM, all built on the construct and in the methodology of a C, uh, uh, software as service, but diversified in their offerings. And would it surprise you to know that cyber criminals have diversified their as a service products as well. For example, ransomware as a service. And if you don't know what ransomware is, you know, in brief, it is an infiltration of a computer system, infecting it with malware that encrypts all the important data and requires a ransom to be paid to release that data. And there are now subscription-based or commission-based products on the market, ransomware as a service. There are phishing as service kits now, and these have all the email templates that folks use to spoof you, being from Best Buy, being from Microsoft, Apple, your bank. These are just plug and play templates, kind of like what you see in MailChimp if you use that for your business. Um, there are website design templates as well. So they can build these fictitious websites, not from scratch, but using these templates as a shortcut, right? Dynamic web addresses. There's even 24 seven customer support. And again, commission based or monthly subscription fees for criminals to access these tools. And by the way, these tools and a couple more we'll talk about, they weren't developed from scratch. Um, for this purpose, they were successfully used. They were templates, strategies, processes, software technologies successfully used to infiltrate companies and steal people's data. And that's why they're on the market because they've <laughs> got a terrible proof of concept behind them. And now we get to the last two and probably the most nefarious of all, DDoS as a service a distributed denial of service as a service software product. And you've read about these in the past where entire websites get shut down, healthcare systems, political campaign, donation websites, you know, the list goes on and on. When they're hit with these um, floods of botnets that attack their website and overwhelm it with traffic, the website eventually shuts down and becomes unusable. And oftentimes, as you can read here on the screen, these bots carry malicious software, malware, and just overwhelm and flood a device. And you can literally buy access to a um, distributed denial of service software package for as little as $20 a month. Can you believe it? But the most dangerous and the most valuable of all of these software types is exploit as a service. Because what exploit as a service does is creates a zero day attack. And what does that mean zero day? That means by the time a 
particular company or a software vendor becomes aware of the exploit, it's already too late. They already are too late to do anything about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the bad actors are up in their game. They're gaining access to sophisticated toolkits far beyond what we can imagine. And when we see a 3x increase over half a year from last year's numbers, from 3,000 to over 9,000, imagine where we're going to end up at the end of this year. Maybe it's a 4x or it's a 5x. The cyber criminals are up in their games, which means we have to up our game as well. In future videos, much like the interview that I did with Dave Dacient, who is a two-decade-plus cybersecurity expert, we're going to talk about the ways to keep yourself safe. But you know what? You don't have to wait for that video. There's an excellent product out there called Know Before. And what we find is the greatest majority, and I'm pulling this out of the air, but I believe it is 80 to 95 percent of all cyber attacks on businesses are because of human error and not systems related. That means clicking on the wrong email, um, clicking on an SMS, whatever that may be in those social engineering attacks, the majority of them, 80 to 95 percent I believe, are caused by human error. So going to courses like Know Before can really help teach you and your team how to stay safe at work, how to avoid these exponentially growing cyber attacks, going after data, shutting down businesses and websites, how to protect yourself. And there's some very common, easy steps that we'll outline in some future videos on the Money Watch podcast that will help you as well. But between now and then, if you haven't subscribed to Know Before, take a look at it. It's really worthwhile. It's an excellent training course developed by a former hacker who is now teaching companies and individuals how to stay safe based on his expertise in the hacking world. So I want to thank you for joining me. I hope this opened your eyes, if they weren't open already, to how extensive this risk is becoming, how exponentially it's growing, and how sophisticated the tools of these bad actors are becoming. Um, and if you got something from this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I promise you I'll continue to put two to three videos a week out with relevant and important content. Please share this with friends and family. Uh, show it, you know, at work uh, if you think that would be helpful. Whatever it is, let's get the word out. Let's all work together to stay safe, stay protected and shut these bad actors down. My name is Philip Macko, five-time published author, host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. Thank you for joining. I hope you have an excellent day.